Good afternoon, anyone, everyone, and thanks to uh, Dr. Divi Chandna. She's creating another show for me today. <laughs> Dr. Divi, you can reach Dr. Divi at www.drdivi.com. And welcome, everyone, to Tea and Chocolate Productions. And Dr. Divi and I are going to be speaking about what's happening uh, today in the world. And Gonna, we're going to talk about some insights, some reflections, and perhaps some things that can um, help support our journey right now in, as we go through these various challenges that we're all experiencing. So thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for having me. Okay. So I thought we'd start off with um, an introduction um, about a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're offering today. Um, so my name is Dr. Debbie. Hello, everyone. Um, my background is I, I'm a family physician, uh, graduated about 25 years ago, and I currently work uh, primarily as an intuitive coach. So I use intuition, uh, awareness of energy, and level, deep levels of healing to help people heal their lives mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and thereby physically. And so that's what I work where I do that one to one with clients and I also teach a lot of classes uh, online to help people do that. I also have recently um, released a book. Forgot to tell you that, Lauren. That's oh, wow. Out. Yeah, Shady the ebook comes out. And so, um, yeah, and it's called You Don't Look Psychic. It's a book all about waking up your intuition and your natural gifts. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Not to that too. Yeah, that, that gets released. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, I look forward to reading it. Yeah, I co-authored it with a woman named Lynette Brown, who I teach a lot of classes with. So, yeah, so it should be out in physical from a, in about a week, um, but on ebook today, so. Yeah. When, when, let's get right into it. Let's talk about COVID. Sure. I'm good so, um, what, um, from your perspective, when it first, when you first heard it, what was your initial response to that? My initial knee jerk response personally was <gasps> fear. How, how could it not be? Right. 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 Yeah. Something very scary. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And then it was like, okay, well, what do we do with this? So, so as a human, my knee-jerk response was, oh, this is pretty scary. Like SARS was, if you remember SARS many years yes. ago. Yes. Yeah, same, same emotional, mental, physical response is what I experienced. Okay. This seems to have taken on quite a dynamic form in uh, humanity today. And what do you think the differences are between, like, say, SARS, the previous viruses, and then this one today? Yeah. So I'm going to both bridge um, physical and the metaphysical because that's what I do. Yeah. So, you know, this one has a very different energy to it. It's on the planet at 2020. It's the time of awakening, time of rising of consciousness. So with SARS, it was kind of like a wake up call. Hey guys, are we paying attention to each other on the planet? What's going on? World is too small. Do we listen? Do we not? Who knows? And now with COVID, it feels like this is obviously a much bigger entity. And um, how we're dealing with it is really individual as well as a, so as a society. And it's impacting everybody. It cannot not impact us. So it's just, a, it's a very different experience. And there's a lot of metaphysical, emotional, spiritual lessons in it for everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Have you received any interesting messages? Because I, you know, consider you a person that has a particular relationship with the divine or consciousness or God, however you describe that force right <clears throat> um what yeah what's your relationship now just in terms of uh what's going on in terms of like getting messages to help you know your clients or your family members yeah so the primary message around covid there's mul there's multiple layers so i'll give you what what's been coming in first one is it's about love it's about how can i love the person who's standing next to me and not be afraid of them that's the biggest one. The only way that this is going to heal is when we stop seeing borders. How can I love somebody in Japan that I don't even know right now? Yeah. How can I love my neighbor who I may or may not know her for his first name? So that's one layer of COVID. Right. Another, another layer. And so love instead of fear, because right now we're approaching with a lot of fear, right? But we're not going to heal it with fear. We can't. It's impossible. Another layer of it is what, are, is what we're doing on the planet right now what we want to do, which is why a lot of people are getting kicked out of their jobs, their careers, right? So wow. many businesses are shutting down because it's like, okay, this is what's happening in your life. You know, do you want to keep doing this or not? Is this working? Right? It's a snapshot. So a lot of my clients, a lot of people I know are taking this time to go within. What is this? 
you know, and you know, I, I was joking with you when I ran into the other day that I've always been really busy and with COVID, I just went, like it was insane, right? Because everybody <laughs> wanted help and it hasn't shifted, it's just still insane, which is, which is a good problem um, because people want to go inside. And the other, the other layer that I keep hearing from spirit is for us as humans to not think of this as we're bad. Mm. This is shakeup. This is also another layer that I, I really need to stay here because they're saying it to me very loudly, yeah. is this switch from patriarchy to matriarchy. We're, cu- we're coming out of thousands and thousands of years of patriarchal institution as to how we've been raised. You know, you and I were both raised as boys in a, you know, even though we're both women, right? I see. Well, that's I never, you know, I never um, heard it articulated in that way. Yeah. And so this is healing. Lo- healing is a feminine thing. Okay. Got it? Yeah. And so in order for us to, Dalai Lama always says that there would be a switch to the matriarchy, and that's what COVID also represents, is a switch into the feminine energy. Because again, the only way for this to heal is for me to call Lauren saying, hey, sweetie, how are you? I love you. I'm scared. I'm scared that you've got it. I got to stay away from you. Right? (laughs) It's got to come from love. So this is a switch to the matriarchy as well. So there's lots of layers that COVID represents you know, all of which we're being asked to go inside to look at. Yeah. Well, that's very comforting. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, right now, though, we have a very divisive, even if it's COVID or anything else, we have a very divisive um, country and on a lot of matters. So if it's to bring us together, it's like, well, when? Because it's such a deep transformation, you know, from going from one extreme to the other. And that's why it feels so uncomfortable. Right. Right? That's right. why it feels like there's, a, I keep seeing a picture of where there's a shovel and we're getting dug up. Mm. That's why we're, a lot of us are really scared and a lot of us are backed up against the wall. You know, and, you know, at the end of the day, is it about love or is it about money? It was, you know, there's all these conversations, right? Yes. So how do we approach this through love or what are we doing here? Right. And so you're right. We live in a very divisive, divisive, divisive culture and we have to unify for us to come together. Right. Right. Now, earlier you talked about um, a career, for example, and, you know, people are going within and asking them of themselves the question, you know, do I want to continue to do this or not? And I guess the question is, is where do dreams fit into all this whole thing? Because, you know, to me, it's, <laughs> it's almost like, I don't know if they, if we can attain them now, because it seems like nothing is in our control, right? It's like, we don't know what's going to happen in a week time, let alone with or without COVID. Add this to the mix. And I'm just wondering where you fit with, you know, if you could speak on dreams, for example. Sure. Just so you know, on my screen, you froze for a second. Just yeah, so you know. me, me too. So, okay. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Can you repeat that just for me? Just so I make sure I got that. So dreams. Where, where, so, where should we, yeah. Uh, can we have our dreams? Yeah. Despite what's happening? Yeah. So the long and short answer is yes, because every, every dream becomes a thought and emotion. Mm-hmm. Universal laws are still working. Energy is still working. Mm-hmm. Just because we can't cross the border, we can't, we can't accumulate in gatherings doesn't mean we're not allowed to drink. Right. And so, you know, I, I'm not sure if this is going to answer your question, but they say that everything that exists happens long before the first brick and mortar. So any business that wants to open, right. like let's just say you and I want to open a soda machine, like an ice cream shop, let's just say, had the idea today. And in 2021, in, Jan- in January, we open, we do the first brick and mortar. The creation of that business is everything from August to January. All the mind, all the emotions, that's what creates that business, not the first brick. So we have all this time to dream and to feel and to be and to use universal laws and to heal a lot of our stories so that when we can get out crossing borders and doing all those things, we can do it with such much more grace. This is a chance for us to heal our stories. Mm. It's a chance to heal the, the voices in our head. This is a chance for us to heal the unforgiveness and the anger and to remove this divisiveness we're having. 
Yeah. Do you have any insight as to why it happened now? I, I know you talked about, you know, patriarchy to matriarchy, but why in 2020 or well, started in 2019? <laughs> really, it did. Yeah. Well, I mean, whoever they is, yes. they always said that 2020 would be the rise of the, would be, uh, would, would be the rise of the metaphysical world, right? So, you know, you and I have been on the planet for a long time. Yeah. If you and I had gone to Indigo Bookstore, say, 15 years ago, the self-help section would be this small. Right? Yes, yes. Now we go in, it's bigger than my room is. Yes. Because now is when that is going into expansion. Does that make sense? The mm -hmm. metaphysically, we're being asked to live more from our heart, from our energy bodies. We're being asked to co-create rather than just create outside of the divine. Because a lot of humans are just, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Without any reflection of the universe, the world, society. Right? Is this healthy for society? Is this good? Is this not? This is now about co-creation. So why 2020? Whoever they is always said that 2020 was going to be the turn. And who knew it would come as a virus? Right? Who knew? Right. 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 Yeah. What would you say to people who are struggling? Um, I know you talked about love, so that's maybe one message. And who are going through a level of grieving? Grieving whatever it is, grieving loss of loved ones, grieving um, loss of business, loss of money, grief, whatever it is. Exactly. The key really is to go within to that place where there are no words. Hmm. That's why we've always talked about meditation. Right. You know, if we meditate for 10 or 15 minutes, that's it, 20 minutes. And we're willing to continue to return to the meditation mat, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks into it. Eventually you'll get to a place of essentially quiet stillness expansiveness where there are no words and there are no troubles either there's a stillness like watching a pond on a beautiful sunny day that's where truth lies and that's the only place you can heal from grief it's the only place you can heal from loss and that's where you actually start to understand you're much more powerful than what you're what you perceive you just lost and that's where you actually start to really live from from that place of infinite oneness with who you are in here. This is about connecting in here to what we call the divine self, spirit self, whatever you, words you give it, the God self, I don't care what word. It's about connecting in there. Yeah. That's beautiful, Vivi. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's some words that really kind of pop up, you know, throughout this um, conversation and truth. You know, you, you, your people are asking themselves about, you know, living their truth, whether it's career or a relationship or whatever it is, but why as a, as a society, this is always something that's baffled me. Even it starts in family systems where truth is so hard. You know, when you're seeing something that's being presented on the news, the fulsome of the story isn't captured until later. And in the meantime, humanity's responded in, in traumatic ways. Um, you know, and from one thing to another, we've been responding and they're traumatizing. And I'm wondering where, you know, when can we be truthful in this lifetime? It's a great question. You know, that a lot of teachers will teach us that the only thing you ever have is your word, your integrity. Yes. That's it. Right. That's it. That's it. All, all you can ask for is yours. And it's a ripple effect. If you have yours, can that person have theirs? And can I not hold a gun to their head if they don't? All I have is mine. Can it be true to mine? And that's ultimately the start and stop of people's lives. Sure, we might have whole cultures, whole societies who aren't being in truth, and that is their choice. But if I am, this is who I have to answer to is me and my own connection with me. Right. Not to distance myself from those, but to know that if, a culture or a community or a society isn't being in truth, and that will actually affect them now or down the road if it already isn't. Right. But it's not my job to be the one who impacts it. Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. Well, what about those who feel silenced right now, like that whole cancel cu culture where they're unable to exercise their words that are coming out of this particular energy part of our body? Um, and I, I keep thinking about the surge of maybe a rise of disease or something like that. It, 
Do you know, like there's this real silence, like the whole symbolism behind the masks and the silencing is, oh my God, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> Please go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Talking, Lord, you're doing great. Um, you know, for us to be truly truthful for who we are mm. is to speak our truth to ourselves and as much as we can to others. Knowing that, knowing that there is within ourselves the truth that matters is to us and our own higher self and our own higher calling, knowing that we can't convince anyone else. And at the same time, right now, you know, you may feel suppressed in your speaking, but be free to speak in your own home. Be free to speak with your own people. Be free to speak to yourself. Ah, right? Yeah. And I hear you when you say like the epidemic of illnesses that are coming from this, 100%. The mental health crises from this is through the roof. Right? Right. And yet the only place we are free from mental health crises is within ourselves. That's the crazy thing. Right. The only place I'm free from depression, anxiety is when I connect to my higher self, my higher calling. It's the only place I'm going to find calm. What, what do you think that takes? What level of strength and understanding, let's call it courage even, to stop ourselves and do something like that? It takes each of us doing it. It takes each of us stopping and going within. Mm. We don't have a choice. I mean, there's a reason that we yeah. can't accumulate in groups. There's a reason, right? Because we're being uh, asked to go in here. Ooh. Do you get it? Yeah. So why for two months was I stuck at home? Sure, I was on my computer all day. But, you know, why? Because I'm asked to slow down. Mm -hmm. Go in here. Mm -hmm. Listen in here. Mm -hmm. Stop going out there. Go in here. Right, right. What can you say about people that are in really troubling situations, um, whether they're here at home in Vancouver or, you know, in countries that, like developing countries, you know, people that are in refugee camps who just don't have the capacity um, or the privileges really that we do here? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Let's speak to people who are, say, in North America as well as abroad. Yes. First off, the first thing I keep going to that I got to say is, I'm going to repeat it, even though it sounds repetitive. We yeah. can all go within. And that's kind of the first step for all of us. Right. And the other thing I'd also suggest is that those of us who have more and have that ability do reach out to help. So if you have the ability to reach out and help the food bank or reach out and help, you know, um, MSF, right? MSF um, Sans Frontiers, do that. I mean, use your dollars, your voice to help others. Mm hmm right? Mm -hmm. um, because you're right, there are people who are underprivileged and don't have access. But no matter who you are, you can go in here to find a quiet space. Everybody can. Right. Everyone can. Right. Even if they don't think they can, they can. Right. Right. And those of us who do, are more privileged, what else can you do? And it might be as something small as going to your neighbor and seeing if they want help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe uh, calling somebody you haven't talked to in three years. Just check in. Are you okay? Are you alive? How are you? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I think each of us are being called up for that right now. Right. Right. Yeah. I think what's interesting too is that when we hear stories of kindness, we we get surprised by those things, and it's as though it needs to be an innate practice that we are kind, right? <laughs> Yeah. And so when I, when I see like responses, oh, you know, this person was just did this. And it's like, well, of course, like, why aren't we there? Yeah. I was actually, yeah, I was in Costco two or three weeks ago. And yeah. I was standing in line to pay for my groceries. Yeah. And there was somebody in front of me and then somebody in front of her. Mm -hmm. And then um, the woman in front of her, you know, the cashier kept saying, that card doesn't work. Do you have another card? That card doesn't work. Do you have another card? You can see where the story's going. Yeah. She just had a couple of boxes of muffins. You know, and I'm standing there and I'm suddenly realizing that the woman keeps using the same card, right? And not changing cards to figure out. So I whispered to the woman for me, how much is that? And she goes, it's eight bucks. I'm like, eight dollars? So I went out and paid it. You know, and the woman came up to me and thanked me. I mean, who can't do that? You know, I'm, I'm I, always, I said to the cashier who thanked me after, I was like, I'm blessed to say that I can spend eight dollars on somebody else. Yes. You know, but that's the kind of thing we're all being asked to do more of. Mm. Those of us who can't. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Very it's much. That kind of like trickle kindness. Yeah. Thank you for all that. Yeah. 
um, in our discussion off, you know, off uh, topic, offline rather, um, we brought up the opioid crisis in Vancouver. Um, I, I take a deep sigh because it's an, it's a vicious circle, um, a never ending story. And it, and it has, um, you know, it, it has been reported that it's um, at the highest. And I'm wondering if you can speak on that. Sure. So what we've done with COVID is we've chosen to put fear and isolation first. Okay. Rather than love and connection we can still respond to COVID mm. through love and connection. Okay. And because we've chose to respond to it with fear and disconnection, mm -hmm. it's surging the rates of anxiety, depression, needing to use something. Right. To escape this reality we're living in. So of course the crisis is through the roof. Yes. Because, you know, I can speak for myself and I can't speak for everybody. But I, I've read the statistic out there that I know for myself, I'm only, you know, in the past, maybe even now, three decisions off of being on the street. You know, all of us can say that. Three, de three bad decisions, not bad, but three decisions that I might make might cause me to be on the street. Okay. So if that's me, that could be you, it could be her, it could be him. So are, am I going to be afraid of you and put up a wall to you, which is what we're doing with the COVID? Or am I going to go... I love this person. I'm not afraid of her. I'm going to be opened up for connection. Those are my only two options. And so what we've done is we've said, I'm scared of the person over there. I don't know who they are, but they could give me COVID and I could end up in the ICU. There's been no con conversation about what you can do to increase your immune system. There's been no conversation about your thoughts and your energy, but there's been no conversations about, you know, like, hey, this person over here who may not be my, they, they I, you know, I, how, what's it like if I'm not scared of them? They're just in the grocery store like I am, but can I not be scared of them? There's been no conversations about that. It's been, been be scared of everybody because they all might have COVID. I'm like, really? I actually have to be scared of everybody? Like everyone, really? And that's how we're, that's how we're doing this. I can still be six feet apart from somebody and not be scared of them. Yes, okay? yes, yes. And send them love and be respectful. But we're being, we're being asked to approach this through fear rather than connection and love and are you okay Do, okay is is uh dr henry on some level doing that or is it still yeah. i think she was i mean i haven't like straight up i haven't recently been watching it since um in the last few weeks i haven't really but when first she was i think she has been mm -hmm. you know what was her her motto wasn't it be kind be safe be grateful is be that calm, i think be calm be calm. yeah <laughs> Okay, I don't watch it verbatim either. So okay. I think her, her approach, especially initially, again, I can't speak to her right now because I haven't been really paying attention the last few weeks. Yeah. But at first, especially when we were in lockdown, I think that was her, her, her messaging. Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. I think a lot of us who all started just watching news and reading the newspaper and watching CNN, we're brutally afraid. I have a lot of clients in the States and you know, the ones in California are like afraid to leave their houses. You know? Mm hmm what if I go outside and get it? Yeah. Now there's that much fear being instilled. So let's circle back to the beginning, what you said about love. And that's the only way that we're going to, you know, kind of come out of this sort of uh, transformation. Um, and I, I, you know, feel that the, that's uh, like straight up accuracy on your part, <laughs> if I may say so. <laughs> Yeah. But, but how, how are you going to get your message over to the allopathic model? I, Does it matter? To me, Lauren, and it's not, to me, it's like a big mountain. And if I was going to try to convince them that I'm climbing a huge mountain, so I'll get, I'll run out of water on. Okay. Okay. So I, I always think of that's not my fight. Yeah. My role is to hold, hold my opinion. Right. My energy system. Yeah. And those who are interested in this type of work will find me. Or we'll listen to this and go, yeah, maybe I can approach this with more love, less fear. It's a very, very, very simple conversation. But if I think the allopathic model is the be all and end all, then I'm hooped. If I've got to convince them, I'm hooped. I can't, I can't. It's a whole system because I've, I've lived that system for, for decades. Mm -hmm. It's a whole system that's based on fear, right? Yes. yes. You have to be scared, Lauren, that you have this going on in your body because this going on in your body, da, 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 da. 
right? And to some level, there is some, some truth in what they say. Yes. But at the same time, fear begets fear begets fear begets fear. And I always joke, um, the Western medical model has the greatest self-referral system because we tell everyone to be scared of their bodies. When our body is just our divination tool, it's just telling us, are we in alignment with our spirit or not? That's it. Why are we to be scared of it? Right? So, so if I was trying to convince the allopathic model, I think I'd be here all day. So I'm not going <laughs> to. <sighs> Do you ever get discouraged? No, because I think, you know, I think there's enough people out there who I'm not here to convince anyone yes of a certain belief but right. if this this chart like if this chimes in someone's ears and they go hmm, i'm curious you know maybe there is a way because there's a whole sections in our book on COVID, right because we're editing it yeah because i mean we wrote the initial manuscript and then we're doing the, and the editing processes when COVID happened so like we added some chapters into how to approach COVID with your natural intuition so you know if people are interested or sparked by this go pick up the book give me a call we'll talk but I don't get discouraged mostly because I just, I honestly feel that I have direction through my thought and my emotions, right? My son's school starts, my son who's in grade 10 this year, starts school in two weeks. I could either be freaked out or I could be like, you're gonna be fine. One or the other. I only have two choices. Okay. So what works for me and what works for him is to go, you know what, dude, you're gonna be fine. Just do what they say, put a mask on, wash your hands, you'll be fine, right? Is that what you would say? Yeah. Or I could say, be afraid, don't go to school, which is fine too. But, but at the same time, him, he'd have such an impact of the isolation from not going to school, that would have more of a negative impact on him, on my kid. Every right. kid's different. Right. So do I get discouraged now? I just figure it's, if I'm here to impact one other person and maybe that one other person is just me and my family, great. Great. So I don't get too discouraged. Right, well, thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, you've given us some uh, really good things to think about today. I really appreciate that. Thank you. It's a really great reminder and actually refreshing again to be um, in your presence again. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, it, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day too. Yeah, thank you. So drdivy.com, uh, if you want to reach out to her, please do. And thanks again for joining me on Tea and Chocolate as per usual. Have an amazing day and take good care of yourselves. Thank you. Take care.